Welcome to 30 Minute Reviews. I'm Adam. And I'm Josie. And I'm Peter. And hey, Peter. we are... Hey, How are you Josie. today? I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. Um, are you ready to do the podcast? Yeah, I. Yeah, that's why we I asked was him. not asking you. Oh, okay. I was asking Josie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, Peter, I'm ready. How about okay. you? I'm also ready. Good. I just had a non pizza, which was pizza, but instead of crust, it was a non bread. It was very good. I love non pizza. Because then I can go, it's not really pizza. It's not. Yeah, it's, not like, it's basically, it's, it's healthy, <laughs> too. That's yeah. It kind of tricks you into thinking it's healthy. Yep. Indian food's the healthiest. Mm. Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> it's. Okay, so are we, are we ready? Are we, are we ready? <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Okay. I already asked if we're ready. The answer. Okay, well, uh, ordinarily we would start out with headlines, but um, due to uh, technical issues, uh, we don't have that uh, uh, up and ready. So I'm going through as we go um, and talking about it. Um, so I, I brought up comicbook.com. Uh, this is one of the, the headlines. I want you to tell me what's wrong with this headline, okay? How Darth Vader in Rogue One connects directly to the Star Wars prequels and originals. <laughs> Does it need to be th- like they ran the same article where it's like the shocking connection between Fantastic Beasts and where to find them? Oh, yeah. and the original Harry Potter. Like it's a prequel, like it's a literal you, prequel. Does it need a connection beyond that? You also don't even need Darth Vader to connect them because it's about like the rebels before, like and they're capturing the plans for the Death Star from Episode Four. Yeah, it, it's it's really it. I I just got back from seeing it. That's why it's uh, it, we're on so late. Um, well, we're not live, but that's why you know it's not up our usual time. It's um, it's it's really good. I think it's un- for me. It's unseated. Uh, Civil War is my favorite movie of the year. What movie? Rogue One. Oh. Um. I'm gonna be a little pissed off. I saw a headline that may that may piss me off a little bit. If it's if it's true, it does Rogue One have a post credit sequence? <laughs> did you not stay? I did not because it's a Star Wars movie. But it's a Disney movie. Yeah, but did did imagine like the Force Awakens had a post credit sequence that like no one has seen? Like Look, the... literally hundreds of people would have killed themselves in the movie theater. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um. That was an awful experience seeing that movie because, like, I, I saw it in AMC, and if you if you have an AMC by you, you know that this happens um, in the movie. Whenever they show movies, they have like before it starts, they have like the the, the Coke promo. So like, uh, turn off your cell phones and enjoy your Coke. They, started, they gave a standing ovation to that. That is amazing. And then the movie <laughs> was, didn't start. The movie didn't start. It started, like it, the the last trailer played, and then they. They, there was a black screen, and then there was like oh, just complete silence. So then there was a standing ovation, and then it's like, please silence your cell phones. And, <laughs> I would have just started laughing. For the entire rest of the movie, no one applauded anything. It was perfect oh. until the very happened. end. Oh, I've yay. never been to a movie that had a standing ovation before at the end of it, but that happened. I oh my god I would get so angry <laughs> like I would I could I can I'm like just hearing that story makes me not want to see this movie like oh the, my god. the ending is so good though like um I, I'm gonna see it when I go back to New Jersey way when's that gonna be so we can say when we're gonna do our uh, um, spoilers probably before Christmas. Cause I, we did not do a pre thought because I got I managed to get tickets for today, and uh, which is you know the fifteenth, and um, I was like I'm jumping on that because it sold out of the theater I like to go to, so I went to the the theater by Stony Brook and I was like, Ugh. oh, also, um, until about two hours ago I thought it was Wednesday, like mm. all day today I thought it was Wednesday, and I was down. It's a rough day. Well, I was just I thought it was Wednesday. It's also because my um. This week is UW's finals week, but I only had a final on Monday, so I've just been going into work, and I just thought today was Wednesday for some reason, 
And so I went into work and I left. I didn't really have anything to do, so I left early. Then I went downtown near kind of where the football stadium is because I went to this uh, food place I like going to. And it was really packed down there. And I was like, there's no Wednesday night football game. And that's where the soccer stadium is too. And I was like, oh, there must be like a soccer game going on. So that's why everyone's down here because there's like no Wednesday night football. And I was just like, oh, whatever. And I just like continued on. And I was like, wow, there's like so many Seahawks fans out. Like they're just ready. I guess they're just ready for like Thursday. So yeah. then click. Then I went home and I was like, wow, the Never Not Funny podcast dropped on Wednesday. It usually only comes out on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> and then I finally checked and I was like, oh, today is Thursday. <laughs> and because you texted me today, too, about seeing Star Wars. I was like, oh, I guess we got a Wednesday showing <laughs> instead of a Thursday <laughs> showing. That sounds more like you were in denial the whole day. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I just, like, like, yeah. like all the signs were there. You just refused to see them. <laughs> and I'm going home on next Monday. I'm flying home. And I was just like, well, for like five days till I go home. But it's now, it's actually four days. The good thing you did that, made that mistake now and not like Monday. You're like, ah, it's Sunday. Yeah, it's Sunday. I don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> I'll sit here uh, and watch it's... football. Oh wait! It's, yeah, it's like oh wait, why are there, why are there Monday afternoon games of football on? <laughs> or or no, why aren't there any football games on? <laughs> um, it's like on the office when Dwight thinks it's Friday, so yes. Jim convinces him, and he just doesn't come in. Um. So yeah, so you, like I was saying before, my laptop decided to you know the most recent Windows update caused an issue with my graphics driver. Which happens. It, it, with Windows 10, I don't know if this is an issue anyone else Windows 10's had, but literally any time there's a software update, if there's a glitch, my computer will be affected by it. That's fun. Like, every glitch that hits, the, that hits Windows 10, whenever it updates, my computer gets it. So the most recent one had um, caused an issue with the graphics card, which would make your computer screen freeze, but you can still use your computer, you just can't use your screen. That could be a problem. Yeah, so... What I do, I do what you usually do. You go into the, the BIOS settings and you restore to a previous image. And it, it, it usually fixes it. But my computer crashed in the middle of doing that. Uh oh. So it corrupted System 32. So I had to completely... Now you gotta delete computer. that. That's where there's a conspiracy. Microsoft puts viruses on your computer when you buy it. So you have to buy antivirus software. And it's contained within System 32. So the first thing you do when you buy a computer is delete System 32. Josie, don't do that. Number one, number one thing. Um, but <laughs> so it corrupted System 32. So and it wouldn't boot up then. So I had to reimage the computer, delete all my files, and re- redo the entire thing. In That's the fun. process, I lost this week's show notes, and I also lost um, what's it called? Um. My uh, my my wireless card decided that it also was gonna go the wayside and not work after I remixed my computer. So I think it's a Best Buy on my dad's suggestion because I was just gonna fix it myself. My dad like no 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 bring it to Best Buy they'll fix it. And I'm like okay. Did they fix it? Back. No, they did not. <laughs> so I bring it to Best Buy. First of all, I bought this laptop back in January in Best Buy and I was 85% certain I bought the Geek Squad protection. Because on my phone, in the purchase, it says one year Geek Squad protection. Uh, apparently, the asshole who rang me up put one year Geek Squad protection on the Disney Infinity game I purchased. <laughs> Not the laptop. <laughs> That's what you get for buying those stupid ass games. Yeah, how many times have you played this? Game? <laughs> so, apparently, yeah, yeah like, it's entirely my fault that this happened. Okay, so she yeah. she put it. You also a very bad. I'm very glad bad you've admitted to time. it. We've gotten to the first stage. Like, how many laptops is this since freshman year? Oh, this is only no, my third. This is my third. This is three. Because the first one, I still, yeah, I still have my one. Mac from then. Well, yeah, this we, is my. I had to go to the Mac store laptop. with the, the Google Hammer issue almost. That was that almost happened. That was hilarious. Um. But, uh, so I bring it to Best Buy, and he's like, oh, I know what you gotta do. You gotta uninstall all all your other drivers and restart the computer. 
And I'm like, uh -huh. okay, you're the you're the certified person in the geek squad. You know what you're doing. You're the certified geek. Yeah, exactly. Like, go ahead, go nuts. He uninstalls everything and it stops working. It it freezes on the boot screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and it's like, oh, okay. Um, so then this other guy comes over and he goes, what are you doing? And he fixes it back to where it was to begin with. So I, my Ethernet cable is working again. And then he goes, look, here's what you got to do. It seems like you just have a hardware failure, in which case HP will cover it. You won't have to pay. Um, but to check if it is, go home and um, manually install the drivers for this computer uh, from the website. Um, and I'm like, okay, that great. Fun. So I did that today, and now it's working again. Um so I am not using Best Buy for tech support anymore after that asshole. That one guy was good. Well, yeah, the one the supervisor was good, but the one asshole and the asshole who put the who, why would you put Geek Squad protection on Disney Infinity? <laughs> like I'm buying a four hundred dollar laptop and a thirty dollar Disney Infinity thing. Why would you think I want the Geek Squad protection on a thirty dollar Disney? I'll just buy a new one. Well, like, he thought that you know you, an adult male who. I was buying Disney Infinity. That was the most important thing. Maybe he is, understood I buy, I intentionally, your... I intentionally buy Geek Squad Protection on everything. I bought it for my Rock Band guitar. and I buy a video game, it's next to $3. I bought it for my Xbox One. Everything I buy, I buy Geek Squad Protection for. Except for my laptop, I guess. What if you brought in the Disney Infinity to Best Buy? Like, what would they do? They'd give you a free replacement. I... Oh, okay. I thought they would, like, try to fix it. No, no, they they would they would give you a free replacement. They'd put peanut butter on it. I don't get it. What? Didn't you've never heard about that? No. If there's um, if there's scratches on your um, uh, DVDs and CDs and stuff, you put peanut butter on it, and it's supposed to fix it. I'm not I don't sure. Believe if that. Like you wipe it off after. I don't believe that. I've never done it, but I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe any of those because I've had games that weren't working, and then I've tried some of the stuff I read online, and it made it worse. So I don't believe any of that anymore. Especially because the the peanut butter, what would that even do? It's not like I don't you know. Can't, you can't like strip away a like layer this. of the CD. No, that, that, that is what work. it is. That's what it was. I remember I did the same thing with toothpaste. I read, and it didn't work. Toothpaste works for a car. Toothpaste headlight. works for hickeys. Yes, or another one that works is you stretch your skin and use a quarter, because uh, on your force, hickeys, yeah, and force the blood out of the hickey. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but I thought that doesn't that. make sense. It does because the hickey is just a bruise. You can yeah. use yeah. a quarter or a sharp, like a sharp edge, and force the blood out of it. Yep. I swear, like one hundred percent. That it has worked. I feel like that's I'm one not of joking. Your trolls, know, where you would fuck eat over. Yeah, that's something where it's like, like you end up like an aneurysm because it's all like push all the air bubble into our brain. I don't know how to make you trust me that this is right, but it is right. <laughs> you just told her literally ten minutes ago. Delete system thirty two. It's fine. Yeah, I know. That's why I can't really figure like prove how, but it does. It's like instant too. It kind of hurts because you're scratching your skin a little bit, and it will leave a red mark for a little bit, but it actually makes the hickey go away. Huh. Is this something that you have tried, Peter? Yes, that is how I can 100% say it worked. No, that's why I wanted to make sure that, you know, somebody else had tried it before I yes. ever I tried have. it. Obviously. It's not like he's doing it for you right now, where you can see. He's just saying he did it. I'll give myself a hickey, and then I'll do it on my arm. <laughs> I want to it. <laughs> do it, please. And then this... can we get a visual recording and post that on no. um, your YouTube? Twitter? Yeah. The um, and the skin on your arm is thicker than on your neck, so it probably wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Um. Well, anyway, then back give to one the... on your neck. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll just do that real quick. Back to fixing CD. Um, I read online you can fix the CD by um using toothpaste because the, the thought process was when you scratch a cd there's a thin layer of plastic on the cd that the toothpaste will eat away and leave just the just the memory part of the disc so you can actually read it that didn't work hmm. no it did not it made my it, it ruined that's, the disc yeah that doesn't it does make sense if that's how cds worked but i don't think that's how cds no work. it's not 
um, what's it called? Because it's, um, I, luckily it was just on my ESPN 2K5 game, and it wasn't anything major. Oh no, I also did the Kingdom Hearts 2. Um, yeah, that was not a good idea on my part. Um, so I'm, I'm just gradually going through sites like, uh, comicbook.com and, uh, IGN to find stories to talk about. So here's the first one. Um, Samuel Jackson, um, tweeted that today he is, uh, he started doing the recording for Incredibles 2. Hmm. Hmm. Neato. I feel like 30 years between might be too far for a sequel. Um, let me see. Hang on. How, is it going to be about the kids? There is no mid. Okay, there is no mid credit or post credit scene attached to Rogue <laughs> Thankfully. Okay, good. I feel less bad about that. Um, right. and, it's been 12 uh, years sure. since the they haven't They haven't released any information about it. Literally, people were born the year The Incredibles came out, and are now in middle school. Like, <laughs> let, let their mind. I wrap genuinely that. love The Incredibles, though. So do I. The Incredibles are very good. Yeah, it's a really good movie. Um, but yeah, they are making a sequel. Um, they're coming out in 2018. Yes. Um, some other cool things. The trailer for episode eight will not be dropping until the spring. Which is weird, because like if they were gonna do a post credit scene with Rogue One, you would think what they would have done is just dropped in, um, do like yeah, uh, just, just pull Captain America and put a trailer for another yeah, movie, put the <laughs> literal trailer for Episode Eight right at the end. Like, a lot of people forget about that, but the post credit scene in Captain America is literally the trailer for the Avengers. So, wrap your head around that one. Mm. Um. The Han Solo origin movie, coming out in 2018, begins filming next February. Cool. Um, oh, I was also right about um, the Logan trailer giving me chills when I see it in theater. Did you jizz in your pants? No, I did not. Um, I don't believe you. <laughs> Let's see what else. I'm still going through. Um, <laughs> one of the, Kevin Smith shows off um, his his new custom hockey jersey. Like, yeah, like that's his life. Wait, did Alan Thick die? Yes. When did he die? Like two days ago. Oh, he died two days ago. Mm-hmm. Who's Alan? I Thicke? guess this is what happens when I don't actually watch. <laughs> I don't like watch news. <laughs> All my news comes like a week later from podcasts. <laughs> Yeah. Um, let's see what else we have trailers to talk about. Um, this spring, uh, Dragon Ball Super will be entering its next arc after doing the Future Trunk Trunks arc again. They're doing a new arc in the spring of 2017. Um, if you're familiar with Dragon Ball Z, you know uh, they don't only really do seasons as much as they do arcs on the show. I think I don't know if that's an anime thing in total or if that's just a Dragon Ball Z thing, um, but they do that. Um, let's see, uh, George R. R. Martin thinks Westworld will beat Game of Thrones. Uh, thinks Game of Thrones will beat Westworld at the uh, Golden Globes. So. Probably. Yeah. Like, what's the fuck is that? Oh. Oh, okay. This, this is one that pisses me off a little bit. The latest old TV property getting a modern TV series reboot is... Jeffersons. uh, Guess what what TV show? The Jeffersons. No. Do you want me to give you a hint at what channel's doing it? Sanford and Sons. Do you want me to give you a hint at what channel's doing it? Okay. DBS. TBS? CBS. Oh, CBS. The Merrily Tyron Moore Show. No. Can you give me another hint? Um... There were there was an animated version of the TV show um, in the 1960s. Is that, that the, was the, the same Flintstones? Premise, but set in a different time period. The Flintstones. The original show. 
that the Flintstones the is Jetsons. based on. The original show the Flintstones is based on. Do you know what show it is? The Jetsons. No. Okay, you want another hint? The Honeymooners. The yes. Honeymooners. My next hint was going to be there was a remake of it in the 2000s starring Andre. Cedric um, the Entertainer. Yeah. Uh, Cedric the Entertainer. That was it. Many say that that's better than the entire no, series. No, it's not. But they, uh, the Honeymoon is being planned by a multi-camera comedy, which will be written and executive produced by Bob Cushel, best known for ABC's recent Muppets TV reboot. That was not bad. People just, like, fanboyed too much about that, and were like, it's not my Muppets. It, well, that's why my dad didn't like Rogue One. Like, I grew up watching the Muppets also, and I still enjoyed it. Yeah, like, because it was it's funny. The Muppets, it's like the Muppets grew up with me, because it was a more adult show. The premise of the show revolves around two couples that are still friends and neighbors, but the new twist is that one of the couples has divorced and remarried, creating a whole new dynamic between the characters. This isn't the Honeymooners anymore. What does that even mean? So they one couple got a divorce and then got married again? I guess. Or is that like, did they get married to each other again, or the two separate people? No, I think it means one of the couples... I'm assuming what, what happened is... It's not gonna be the main. It's not gonna be the the Ralph. Ralph and Alice are still gonna be married. It's gonna be the other two. Um, Art Carney, who's never gonna be playing his role, is gonna be um, divorced. He's gonna be the estranged friend, and the wife is gonna have remarried another guy. I bet he's not gonna be a what bus driver. He's, about? he's gonna be like a train conductor, or like some other thing in what, transportation. What's this gonna be? They're rebooting the honeymoon. What show? Oh. I don't think I don't The Honeymooners that is that great. I never really liked it. Basically, the details reported by The Hollywood Reporter sound like The Honeymoon is updated for a more complicated structure of modern relations and families, and probably fewer threats of domestic violence. <laughs> I hope because... not. I want the same amount of threats of domestic violence. Otherwise, it's not my Honeymooners. Um... Oh, sure. Our time Peter said something like that. It's hilarious. But me, <laughs> everyone would shut the hell up. Okay. It's, I too it ser- it's too serious when you say You it. don't say it in a funny way. <laughs> you, you just say it? it where it's just like, yeah, I bet you do. <laughs> um, okay, well. Um, what else? Gotham City Sirens. Have we, ta- have we mentioned that? Probably not. What is that? Uh, so you remember that deplorable sack of dog shit that came out in August. Uh, sorry, Margot Robbie and uh, Will Smith. No. Suicide Squad? No. Oh, it wasn't that bad. It, it was that bad. Um, Yoga Hosers is worse than Suicide Squad. Okay. <laughs> Gr- great. <laughs> um, well, they're making a, a spin-off movie called Gotham City Sirens, which is about a all-female group of villains. Oh, Gotham I get City. it. And, uh, directed by David Ayer. Thing. He's coming back to direct. Um, I don't understand Ayer. what this whole all-female thing is all about. Like, everything nowadays seems to be all-female. It I makes it, it. I think it makes it worse because it's like you're still alienating them and saying they need their own thing to be able to be special. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Like, you can't it's just like, have a movie. Past, it has like, to be an all-female movie. Like, I just saw Rogue One. There was not a single white guy who was a protagonist in that movie. That's good. And, the but it's only not like white it's... guy in the movie is the bad guy. Bad guy? And it's But it's not like they build it as, like, Star Wars, the one without, like, white people. Like, it was exactly. just a Star Wars movie, and how they casted it just ended up being that way, which is how it should be. Like, it just ends up that way, then that's how it ends up. Like, because it's just people, like, just actors. Like, it doesn't matter what, like, skin color they are. Unless it's a movie about, like, like, if they made a Nelson Mandela movie and they cast, like, Leonardo DiCaprio as Nelson Mandela, then yes, I would would have a problem with that. But, like, I didn't have a problem when they recast, um, when they cast, uh, Will Smith as Deadshot. Like, that was one of the better parts of the movie, actually, which is kind of he's, like, he's probably the best person in the movie. I heard him and Viola Davis. I think Viola Davis is good in that movie, too. Right. Um, the well, honest like... trailer for that movie made me laugh out loud. The part where they're like, and um, it made us want to do this while we were watching the movie. And it's the scene where Viola Davis turns and just starts stabbing a heart over and over again. Yes. It was just funny. Um, but the, the other people in the movie 
Uh, and here's here's my problem with Gotham City Sirens. In the comics, and if you look at other examples of established cinematic universes, well, the one we have, you don't jump into these team-ups of all of these characters that haven't been introduced. Now we're doing another team-up movie of villains where Which the is other <laughs> two heroes, uh, two villains haven't been introduced yet. They're Poison Ivy. And Catwoman. Catwoman. Neither of which have been introduced yet. Uh, Megan Fox is currently being rumored to play Poison Ivy. That'd be uh, bad. Ooh, you don't th- you think that'd be bad? I think Poison Ivy's there's not much to her. She's just supposed to be super sexy. Yeah, no, but, but she was a scient- But she's also a scientist. Um, I want yeah. someone with acting ability. That's my minimum threshold. But when I don't care I want, who you get. I want Uma Thurman back. It's my Poison Ivy. I don't Ivy. know. There we go. Uh, but I, I don't, I don't think. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, Why? Well, I don't know. I don't think that she could do too bad. I mean, she's pretty hot, and Poison Ivy's supposed to be hot, and really, all she does ever is seduction stuff. She, but she, she never like, like. She needs to be. I don't know. She like is a doctor, and I feel like Megan Fox would not be able to pull off doctor, or I feel like it would just be. I don't know, more but annoying. she doesn't. But when she's um, Poison Ivy, she doesn't pretend to be Doctor. And I'm sure there'll be that scene where she's in a lab coat and make, with some beakers. So we've got that to look forward to. Yeah, we've never had that before. <laughs> um, the Batman that was, movie. That was my joke. In. Yeah. There's your one. Sorry, we can't. I'll be funny. Uh, ben Affleck's Batman movie is confirmed to be coming out in 2018. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, there's going to be a trailer soon um, for uh, Blade Runner 2049. So that's fun. Uh, Deadpool 2 is going to start shooting soon. Oh uh, yeah, I forgot about that. I don't think that's going to be good. Um, what's the what's the actual date for that? I, 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 we usually are more organized than this, um, but we had an issue. Are we? June of 2017, <laughs> when that starts filming. I can't wait. For Deadpool 2, really? <laughs> I liked Deadpool. Apparently fine. someone fan-cast Jennifer Lawrence... As a female version of Groot. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. No, it wouldn't. That would be kind of funny. Just her running around screaming Groot. <laughs> I am Groot. I think Groot's going to be... No, it'd just... be I am Grootette. <laughs> I think Groot's going to annoy me in a second. Uh, Guardians movie. Yeah. Let's uh, let's talk about uh, trailers then. Let's move on to that So uh, while we're on the topic. Uh, So, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. We're in that Star Wars surge of trailers, where we get a bunch of trailers for a new Star Wars movie, because everyone wants to have that little, like, have that little plug onto it. So, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, obviously one of them. Um, What did you think about it? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, I was reading. What did you think about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2? Oh, I liked it. I just want to repeat it again, that... Tiny Groot, I think, is going to annoy me because I can already see it in my mind sitting in that movie theater and people forcing laughter every single time that Tiny Groot is appears on screen. Like, it, oh I don't know. God. I the the first the opening scene with Tiny Groot seems funny, but I imagine that eighty times no, just over and over. Yeah. I I see what you're saying. Where somebody comes on, whenever he comes on, people just laughing because he's funny looking. Yeah. Yes, and, and not because have, he's doing anything funny. It's because they have no voice in public, so they just laugh really loud in the dark because that's the only place they're confident enough to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do agree. Tell us how you really feel there. <laughs> that is what happens at in all these movies. Yeah, every Marvel movie I've been to has been. This is, that is, that's what. That's why. It's really that's why. Like if you go to a like if you go to a, like an actual comedy, that wouldn't happen. Exactly. 
Um, like when I saw the Nice Guys, that was a really funny movie, and people laughed, but they laughed at like actual funny parts. Or like what's it called? When we saw Creed, people reacted, but it wasn't annoying the way they were reacting. Yeah, exactly. Like you, there's a clear difference yeah, between like, forced reaction and actual reaction. Um, uh, speaking of Marvel, uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming dropped its new trailer. Um, I didn't watch that one yet. I don't think I'm going to see Spider-Man. Oh, is that uh, the actual trailer or the teaser? The actual trailer. We talked about the teaser last week. Okay, that's what I was wondering, because I was like, oh, I watched that. The but actual trailer was the, uh, the oh, new one. I haven't watched it. It's, uh, I think it looks pretty okay. Um, I think it's going to be the best Spider-Man movie since Spider-Man 2. Um, like, better than Spider-Man 2? I'm or hoping like that it'll be Spider-Man? a decent Spider-Man movie, because so far I haven't liked any of them. Do you even like the Sam Raimi first and second ones? Is that the new ones? No, 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 no the original with Tobey Toby Maguire. No, one. I hate him. You not like? I was like, you don't like Tobey Maguire? I hate him as, like, a person. Okay. I don't even think he's a decent human. Why? <laughs> Did you have, like, an encounter with Tobey Maguire? <laughs> No. He but murdered he can't, my he's in like, front of me. <laughs> he he's just... <laughs> he's kind of like the kid that played Anakin in um the first one. Game where Logan. it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't think he's that bad because he's not just the... He's he so like, bad. He's like, definitely... his stuff sounds like sound bites. What? You don't like the upside down kiss? His stuff sounds like, you know, the stuff where it's like, oh, insert child laughter. So he sounds like stock footage. Yes, that's what I meant. I disagree. I think Spider-Man 2 is one of the best comic book movies of all time. I do like, I enjoy it. I haven't seen either of those movies in a very long time. Is that the one where his uncle's eyes? No, that's Spider-Man 1 because that's that's the origin. That's the beginning of every Spider-Man movie. Well, I mean, like, is that the one where we, like, constantly see his father dying? No, that's... No. Nope. That's Amazing Spider-Man 2. Okay, okay. With Andrew Garfield. <laughs> Jesus. The second one's the one with Doc Ock. he needs your sass, Adam. Yeah, it's... Was Green Goblin in it? Was Doc Ock in it? Was there, like, eight villains that no one cared about in it? Was the very bad version of the lizard in it or was electro in it Ooh. like th- this new one has vulture as the villain so that With michael michael keaton yeah and that's why i might say it because michael keaton's in it it is keaton. gonna win best picture this movie because he's in it yep mel keaton's supporting actor in this movie well he's the, the last, main actor in birdman the last two years he got nominated for an acting oscar and lost, but the movie won Best Picture. So, let's go for three. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Dunkirk, the new Christopher Nolan war epic. Um, about the this movie looks Dunkirk. very um, good. A lot of people who wouldn't have seen this movie are going to see it. Because of Harry uh, Styles? Because of Harry Styles. I hope they pull a Psycho. And they, like, send him up as the main character, and then he dies, like, the first ten minutes. That would be, like, yeah, that would be perfect. Because I, that would be fun to see people cry. Because, like, my sister texted me when I was at work yesterday, like, we have to go see that new movie with Harry Styles. And I'm like, you mean the Christopher Nolan war epic, Dunkirk? And it's like, yeah, that no, one. I, I guess I'll I'm educate like, a lot of people Christ. about the Battle of Dunkirk. Yeah, I'm just like, th- there is so much, like... You have no idea how like good of a director Christopher Nolan is to have his movie like belittled to that new one with Harry Styles. Tom Hardy is also in it. Well, yeah, but then so is uh, Clean Murphy. Yes. Also, he wrote it too, because usually Jonathan Nolan helps him write movies, but he was busy. I think he was busy creating and writing Westworld, so he cannot yes. help with this one. But that also means that this one will probably not deal with time shifts. Yes. What if they go through a wormhole? And that's what they, they 
That's how they that. get back to the battle. They, they go through a wormhole to get to the battle. Um, did you uh, get what I was talking about with the music? Like at the yes. towards the end of the show, the music was really good. Uh, and then we also have uh, finally War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. It looks cool. Um, it all well. It happened when I remember we watched this trailer for the second one. No, it was when we did reviewed the first one. I like was rooting against the monkeys the whole time. I was like, just fucking kill all of them. Like, who cares? Yes. They're monkeys. And then that's like that movie kind of lost me because of that point. Because I was like, who gives a shit about a bunch of monkeys? Like, they're not they're not immune to bullets. And then I don't know what happens to the second one. Um. The best is uh, the third highest comment on the the uh, the trailer is sorry Bobby rooting for the apes lol humanity is so fucked up. <laughs> I'm you're supposed to root for the apes. Yeah, like. like... <laughs> also. The the top comment is pinned by 20th Century Fox, and as all of human history has led to this moment, watch the new trailer for hashtag War for the Planet in theaters, July 14, 2017. Then it says, view all 219 replies. Then, I'm going to try and get through this without laughing. I'm not doing a very good job. This is the, the comment that it says, Jews control the banking system. They buy our political leaders and control the media. They are using their powers to genocide the right, the white race. They are flooding the West with millions of non-whites and using the media for, to promote race-mixing propaganda the Jews for white are? children to depopulate the white race. Whites will become a minority in the U.S. within 30 years. Do a search for white genocide in South Africa to find out what happens when white people become a minority. I want to know what happened in those 219 comments to get that. Like, that is hilarious. What is that a comment strip on? It's the 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 comment that this was a reply to is all of human history has led to this moment. Watch the new trailer for hashtag War for the Planet in theaters July fourteenth, twenty seventeen. That's a pinned comment by Twenty Century Fox about the movie. It's basically them acknowledging you're not going to read the description, so they want to put their comment there on top, so that way you are going to read what they want to write there anyway. And somehow, anti-Jewish propaganda ended up as the top result after that. I don't understand how we got to that point. Um, hmm. Anti-Jew? Yeah. Um, you don't see how we could get to that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, and then... Yeah, and then another comment. All the part of the apes will be also a very confusing Harambe names. Comments. Yeah, there are a lot of comments saying Avenge Harambe. There's like 20 Planet of the Apes movies. Yes. Um, I, I love the end of that trailer. There are two things that really bother me about that trailer. Number one, any character who's the villain saying, the irony of this can go fuck themselves. Number two, um, the end of the, saying, if we lose, it will be a planet of apes. Like, that felt like me, that was, my that joke was about how Game part. of Thrones should end. Like, th truly, this has been a Game of Thrones. That was almost as good as a show for Kong when they say, that's Kong, he's the king. Yeah. So, try to say which of these, these are the original film series. Try to put these in order. I'm reading them out of order. Okay. There's Escape from the Planet of the Apes, Beneath the Planet oh. of the Apes. Battle for the Planet of the Apes, Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, and Planet of the Apes. He, you did way too many. That's how many there are. Okay, do you want, do you want me to I do know, it? I know, but I know like... the order. Do okay, you go. Tell you? Planet yeah. of the Apes. Yep. He's Googling it. I'm not. Then Beneath. <laughs> then Escape. Then qu yes. Conquest. Then Battle. Boom. Congratulations. I think there were other Planet of the Apes movies. Those are the they main just the TV series that they condensed. There's two different into... TVs, yeah. There's two different TV series. Yeah, they condensed episodes of those into movies. Return of the Planet of the Apes. Um, 
And obviously you forgot about the the big one, the the remake. The Tim Burton 2001 yeah. remake. Which has yes, the really that's... stupid ending with the ape on the Lincoln Memorial. Yeah. And then there's also... Oh, no, never mind. That was written down on Wikipedia. Um, I'll take it back. So yeah, let's talk about this week's movie. Um, Star Wars, the original. Uh, otherwise known as... Uh, Are... A New Hope. Uh, who wants to go first? Josie, why don't you go first? Too you have very, close. You have um, very strong feelings no. about Star Wars. I don't want to go first. If I wanted to go first, I would have said so. Don't be a bully. <laughs> wow. All right, I guess I'll go first then. Um. So, uh, so let's see. Um, this movie is not the best of the Star Wars movies, obviously. Empire Strikes Back is the best of the Star Wars movies, but it is, um, let me see, how do I put this? It is the third best Star Wars movie. What are you putting at the second best? Wait, what are you putting in front of the re- of these? Well, I'm putting Rogue One as number two. It was that good? It was. And number three, I'm, I'm putting The Force Awakens just to... Oh my god. Just to annoy Josie. Uh, no, it, it, it is the third, but Rogue One was that good, um, where, it, where it is number two, in my opinion. Um, the, um, it, it really, I, I, like, I think everyone's seen this movie at some point in their lives, and they, like, actually, there are people I work with who have never seen this movie, because they're You're 16. stupid. There's a lot of people that have not mm. seen this movie. Um. But it's but so it, rare that, like, in Icebreakers, it's like... Um, what, you've never seen Star Wars? It's like, the Icebreaker, like, interesting fact, I've never seen Star Wars. Yeah. But, like, uh, what's it called? The, um... I feel like some people do that, just so that way the other person can go, Oh my gosh, you've never seen Star Wars? We're doing that. We're gonna Netflix and chill that. No. They do it as a ploy. Just... Have sex to start with. I'm 85 percent certain that the guy I work with did not tell me he's never seen Star Wars to do that. Mm, I'm pretty sure he did. I don't think so. He wanted you. He wanted a play date. I, I don't think so. Um, okay. But this I movie so. is if it didn't get the the uh, Adam, if it didn't you. have Empire Strikes Back, this movie would be a glorified B movie. With a cult following. Today. I don't know. Because all the special effects in episode 4 are perfect. Like, if you try to look at any other movie made at that time, it still looks amazing compared to any other movie. It does. Like, they took very special care of this movie. Well, that, 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 you gotta be careful with that. Because, keep in mind, think of it like this. the Only the original talk about the original cut of the original. If you're saying it wouldn't be a cult, if it would, because saying that it, it, oh, it aged very well. Well, yeah, they put a new coat of paint on it every few years. No, because I not because even no, because I had the original VHS, and I have watched that recently, and it still looks amazing. And the extra CGI so. that it actually is like the worst part, looking part of the movie. Yeah, not, it, uh, you can always tell. In the most eyes I've seen it is. But the effects for the lightsabers and the effects for the blasters are not the original effects. But I just in They are in the, my stuff. version that I watch. <laughs> like they still and look And they still good. look fucking awesome. But what I'm saying is, if Empire Strikes Back did not come out when it did, and re- really bring this movie like to the forefront, where Empire Strikes Back was that good of a movie that made people go back and watch the first one, we would not be sitting here today where it, we have... That's not true. No, the, we wouldn't. When the first one came but out, that's, it, was, that's the point. it was a phenomenon right when it came out. It wasn't. It didn't wait until the second one to come out. No, like, I, the only reason they could... kind of like the first of its kind where people just absolutely fell not. in love with it? Absolutely not. Because people absolutely fell in love with other movies the first time they saw it, too. 
Like, if we're going to go with big budget special effects movies, um, The Wizard of Oz. I hated The Wizard of Oz. No, I don't mean big budget special effects movies. I mean, the, like, The first Star Wars space. invented, invented uh, summer blockbuster. It's not the first space movie people fell in love with. Because people loved um, Wrath of Khan. That came out first. Did it? Wrath of Khan came out. I thought that Star was Trek. early seventies. Looking it up. Um, Wrath of Khan release date. Let's see. Um, oh wow, no, that was nineteen eighty-two. Never mind. Um, what was the first? Major science fiction movie. Let's look it up. Uh, well, if we're like going the to go data, there, the data Earth stood still is like before Star Wars. Okay, it is definitely true. science fiction movies. I was gonna say what I don't know. I think that there would still be a cult following, but I don't even. It wouldn't be a cult following. I don't think just, that it. No, because you're making it seem like Planet like Apes no in 2001: Space Odyssey, the first one. Well, no, there's no cult following for any one movie ever. That's not true. What do you mean? Right? Like, I mean, there's no one movie out there that I can think of that by itself has a cult following. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay. That isn't a series. Works. Say Rocky that again? Rocky Picture Show. Oh, okay. The Room. No, there's definitely a bunch of cult movies that are just a standalone movie. Clerks to an extent. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what that is. Um, okay. Um, so, who wants to talk about this besides me? Talk I'll about what? We'll go. All right, so, um, the original Star Wars made $3 billion at the worldwide box office. Okay, that's accounting for inflation and including re-releases. I don't know, but it, and, it puts yes. it behind... But it puts it behind only. And without adjusting for inflation, it made $775 million. Okay. Seven, okay, that's still... A, okay, how much... Keep talking. Um, I don't know. This is... I like this. I haven't seen uh, Rogue One yet, but I like this the second best of all of these Star Wars movies. And of the thing it has over... Is. Your favorite five. is, of course, the uh, Attack of the Clones. Yeah, that is. The, the, I do love Attack of the Clones. No, the, my favorite <laughs> is Empire Strikes Back, also. But I, I, I usually go back. I, I go back. I am a little bit impressed. This movie only had an $11 million budget. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. It made $400 and that, what, million in its theatrical release domestically. Mm-hmm. Never mind. Wow, that is accurate. Yeah. I was on MoneyNation.com. I use Box Office Mojo. That's like the uh, the best one for that. Um, so keep talking. I'm, I'm trying to find more information. All right. Um, I think this movie, even though George Lucas said over the years that he knew exactly where he was going with everything in this movie... Like, if you pay attention, it's kind of, like, obvious he wasn't exactly sure. But oh, this, no, um, for sure. George Lucas directed He did directed not know what was one, going right? on. George Lucas, did he direct? I don't think he yeah. directed. Oh, yeah, he directed this he was... one. And, yeah, I thought he directed this one. He didn't direct yes, Empire. Yes, directed, produced by Gary Kurtz, written by George Lucas. Yeah, George Lucas is a very good... I think he's a very good writer. Um, this one, he was lucky that there's other people around to help him direct, because he's not a very good director. Because he doesn't really tell people what to do. He just kind of stands there and watches them. Yeah. So they um, had... I don't know. So this I like this movie because it's also... I feel like it's the only standalone Star Wars movie. Like every yeah, other that you don't need to have seen any of the others to understand what's going on. Yeah, like that's... Is that what you mean? Yeah, like, 
episode five is also very close. We talked about this like two weeks ago, I think. But it's still like to make it better it needs needs episode four, and uh, episode six obviously needs the rest. The prequel trilogy like would just be a like the only redeeming quality about it is that it leads into the the new the original trilogy, The Force Awakens. It literally is the entire movie is set up to to try to make you guess about things that will happen in later movies. It's barely a movie by itself. Um, yeah. Wait, Rogue one? one. The Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. Like, it's, I like Force Awakens. Like, it's good. But it is annoying how much they set up trying to make people guess what else is going to go on. Like, episode four and episode five, too. There's no, like, guessing. It's just kind of like, this is what the movie is. Like, it doesn't try to put in fake, like, stupid plot elements and try to make people, like, go into fan theorizing. Well, I think... The thing is, there there would have been a fan theory in... There probably were people who theorized that Vader was Luke's father. Doesn't... Didn't, um... What's it called? Perfect Pitch teach us that Vader means father in um, German or something? Okay, but it's not how you pronounce it, and there's a lot of digging to get to that point. True. Not if you know German. How do you actually pronounce father in German, Peter? I'm looking it up because I forget. But I don't remember. I remember it was like Faja or something like that. Like closer to how in Austin Powers 3 they say it. Oh, the okay. Faja. <laughs> I love Austin Powers. We need an Austin Power Day. Uh, Austin Powers it's, Day. <laughs> I like the first one and sort of the second one. <laughs> I like it's them va- all. It's, um, Vater is how you say it. Yeah. That's what I got when I, I searched it. Um, yeah. But it, 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 so it, it if, you, if you showed that, it's spelled V-A-T-E-R. So if you showed it to an American, they would probably say Vader. Yeah. Kind of like later with V. But it's... So it's not really. But yeah, it's not... And that guy in, and, and, and in Pitch Perfect 2, Becca's just an asshole. So, like, and in Pitch Perfect, he's kind of just an asshole. So, um, anyway, back to Star Wars. Um, Josie, do you have any thoughts? I like Star Wars. I don't know what you want for me. <laughs> this movie does rip its trench run off, by the way, from another movie. Like, what, do you, what is scene that? Scene for scene. Um, does Star Wars steal Metron? From. There is a movie it steals it from. A political <laughs> reporter tweeted, uh, Trump is either fucking his daughter or he's shirking nepotism laws. <laughs> That they were let go of from Politico. Okay, I found the video. It's a scene. It's a side by side side scene comparison for um, uh, Star Wars and the Dam Busters in 1955. Uh, I'm gonna link the uh, the video in the chat once I figure out how to bring that up. There we go. But like, they go through scene by scene and show what caused it. Oh, wait, this is a YouTube video? Yep. But it, it does directly rip off that scene. Um, but no, I, I may have made it seem like I don't like the movie, but I do really, really like the original. Um, and like I said, it is my third favorite at this point, after seeing Rogue One. Josie probably won't agree with that, um, because she does not like the new Star Wars on principle, but... It's not on principle. It's on the fact that it sucks. Then that, that is <laughs> and none of it makes you... sense. And none of it makes sense. How does none of it make sense? It's literally designed for five-year-olds to understand it. How dare it doesn't you? make sense. It's not the way it's supposed to be. Like, How? why would... I've already told you. You don't want to get into this because every time I get into it, you get mad. 
Every time we get into it, you just sound like you're just like a child. Like, literally every time you guys go into, well, it's not how I remember it. Okay. Um, what's it called? The, um, there is something from the old canon that's brought back into the new canon in Rogue One, though. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Ooh. Yep. So you guys can have fun figuring that out. Um, I don't think Peter will get it. Because nope. he has, he's not familiar with the media it comes from, but Josie might, if she's actually. I don't want to spoil it too much because Peter will know what game it comes from. Uh, what? We were talking about it earlier. Um. So yeah, so uh, how would you rate this movie? Mm, I do love it. It's hard to rate Star Wars movies for me. Same. Because I just love it so much that I just want to say 10 out of 10. All that's, of it. I love it all. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I guess I'll go I'll go a 9.5 out of 10. There, I uh, took a half. Oh. For this? I second that. I'm going to go with an 8.5. Because for me, Empire is nine and a half, and uh, Rogue One is nine. So that's uh, that's what we're gonna do, you know, with that. Um, so with our remaining time, does anyone have anything they want to talk about? Um, you wanted to talk about that. You wanted to talk about that book. Oh yeah. That dumbass book. I've read that book. That what book? dumbass book. The uh, Lords of the Sith. It's a new one. Oh, the, the one where they Why fight. didn't you like it? Because it's poorly written. Hmm. I've heard other people liked it. It's very poorly written. It's not even like it's written in a childish way. I have no problem reading children's books or anything like we that. Did. Yeah, it's that written... sounds super creepy. Especially with all the other children's games you buy. And, like, it, going to toy stores. It, sound, it, like, <laughs> that? it sounds like it was written, but, like, someone had never, like, I don't know how you put it. Like, they they never opened a thesaurus to find any other words. It's very simplistic language. Mm-hmm. Um... I, I, all the characters... It's very hard to get into the characters. I don't like any of the protagonists. It's, it's very slow starting, and it kind of it picks up abruptly with certain things, and there's no real sense of time as to where it takes place. Um, which is, I think, the most important thing is there's no point in this where you can actually go. If it weren't in fact someone told me this will give you context for Rogue One, I wouldn't know it's supposed to take place before Rogue One. Hmm. I went on the Wikipedia page, and it's like one of the worst Wikipedia pages I've ever been on. Well, that's for all of Star Wars Wikipedia pages. Why? They're all very annoying to read. No, this one is literally, like, three sentences. Oh. Like, it's the opposite of most of them. Um, well, the the one good thing this book does, it provides context with how people view, um, Vader and the Emperor, and all that. Um, and it really, you don't really need that context for Rogue One, I'm gonna be honest. Um, but yeah, he's about like it, it just shows. That, Did like, you dislike the story at all? Because honestly, I listened to it. Um, oh, so you didn't read it? I listened to it. I didn't read it. So listening to it and the way that was done was done really well. Like, because they had like, like a story bunch of. Was okay, but like, I just couldn't get into. I just couldn't get into the the characters. I just couldn't like Yeah. I definitely wasn't a fan of like the character progression because you know, all of a sudden, you know, they've got these brand spanking new characters nobody gives a shit about. And then um they try to give them backstories, but without actually giving them backstories, and they're like, Oh, and 
this girl, you know, she does this stuff to try to save people, but we don't know what they're saying. Well, we know what, she, they're, what she's trying to save them from, but they don't really like explain how she got herself into that kind of situation. And it's like, this doesn't make sense. I agree. And that, that. Like, is, um... for a good, like two chapters or three chapters, it just people like, are, like they're just being pussies. Like, Oh, is we going to actually do this? Are we going to actually do this? Oh, what's Vader doing now? Oh, what's going on now? What's happening now? We hear about everything in the first three chapters very passively without knowing what's going on. Well, no, they, I think they make it pretty clear what's going on. They're attempting to... Well, no, we um, know, but we it's very passive help and very fast. Help save Ryloth. Which doesn't, mix, which doesn't, like, mix well. Are Vader and the Emperor the main characters? No. After the, it shows that Well, the, semi. It, it shows how the, the average people view them. They're not viewed as, like, gods or anything like that. They're kind of just viewed as, um, like, their their power. They're, but they're not viewed as, like, the Force isn't something that they're widely known for. Does it go into at all? No, they're they... just known for ruling everything. Yeah. But if you've read any of the other books, they're not really known for being Force users at all. Because it's not that big a deal. That's what um, pisses me off about Star Wars, actually. The inconsistency of people that know about the Jedi slash the Force. Because in the prequel trilogy, it appears that it's just common knowledge and everyone knows about it. But in like 10 years go by and no one actually believes in it anymore. Um, because it's been... Because um, uh, the Jedi were eradicated. And they thought that... So, you know, which is still stupid. They, to this day. And, they, um, and anybody who... It's, still, with, fucking thing it's on the planet. still within people's lifetimes. No, but it makes sense. If you've no, read does. like um, Darth... May, Play, makes, the Plagius one or whatever? That makes sense. I know. I'm just saying that it makes it so that way you can understand it better. That's it all. makes sense if it if the they took place between like over a hundred years, but not twenty years. Yeah, exactly. Because like, but the thing Wait, is, you also have to remember that none of these people have ever really seen the Force. Well, that's the because... thing that they, they but go isn't back to. Is the it... force everywhere? Yeah, but not everybody can touch it. As I guess you have to be a human, and then you can you do it. You have to have No. You have to be a Skywalker. Uh, the Metachlorian thing is so stupid. The Metachlorian thing I love thing how they brought is... that in in Episode 1 and then never spoke of it again. The Metachlorian thing is probably the biggest overreaction in the Star Wars fan base on the planet. I do agree with that, actually, because it doesn't really make a difference. Yeah, it just, it's a scientific I just, I still think that it's stupid. for how the Force works. It's not stupid, it's just like, okay. It's not how the Force works, it's how people are able to use it, apparently. And it doesn't okay. make sense. And it's just weird that they would bring it up all of a sudden. Although, in Darth Plagueis, they do explain, like, Metaclorian account having to do with, I don't care! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm still allowed to say stuff! <laughs> Legends. I don't yeah, even know what the fuck I was saying. I just want to make sure people know that what she's talking about is not canon. You've already said it. I know. I'm. I'm it's just a disclaimer. Well, keep your fucking mouth shut when I'm talking for a second. Jesus, I forget what I was even saying. <sighs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the midichlorian thing is the biggest blown out horse thing on the planet. Like out of all of like. Jar Jar is a legitimate complaint about the prequels. The dialogue is a legitimate complaint about the pre- prequels. How slow paced they are, all that. The midichlorians thing that didn't ruin Star Wars. I don't think it ruined Star Wars either. I just think that it was stupid that they brought it up and then never talked about it again. Well, why would you need to outside the original? Because they didn't explain it at all. They just were like, Midichlor- he's got midichlorians. No, they that's all he said. They explained all you needed to know about it. He has a high midichlorian count. Midichlorians are, are um, tell how you're able to use the Force. If someone has a lot, right. that means they're very powerful with the Force. That's all they needed to explain. It never needed to be brought up again because there's no other character needed explanation or exposition on how to use midichlorians or anything like that. Can't use them. It's just like, like a white blood cell count almost. I don't know. Sure, if you would like to defend it, whatever. 
I still don't think that there was a point to bringing it up. To never mention it again. Um, but what, but what else? Um, hmm, I don't know what else to say. Do you want me to give a non-spoiler review of Rogue One? To wrap okay. Off today? Um, Darth Vader good. dies. What? Darth Vader dies. Yeah, I don't... The the guy behind me, it's like they go, like they, they do the thing before they start the shows. It's like turn off your phones and uh, don't talk during that movie because it spoils the movie for other people. And the guy behind me screams out, "They destroyed a Death Star in the next one!" Ha 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 ha! And I was like, "Shut the fuck up!" <laughs> like, yeah, I'm sure. Like, great, thanks, thanks for sharing, buddy. Like, you're you're so cool now, aren't you? Um, but like. Uh, Did you wish movie, that was you? No. The movie's a little bit slow paced in the beginning. Like it's slow to get started. Um not this isn't a spoiler. There's no opening crawl. Um, I'm fine with that because it's supposed to be separated from Yeah, it's not one yeah, of like, the main that chapters. Helps, yeah, that helps separate it from the main movies. Well the other thing is the opening crawl is helpful in the other movies. Because it, it sets the... It, it's like a framing device. It sets the stage for what you're about to see. You don't need it in this because the framing device is the previous movie, which is episode three. And it goes directly into episode four. So you know where, where it is. You don't need to be told where this movie takes place. Uh, also, they have subtitle text to show what planets they're on. Huh. Which is a little bit jarring for Star Wars. For some yeah, that's weird. But that's fine. There's also flashbacks. Well, how many planets do they switch between a lot of planets? There are like four different planets. That is, because the, all the other Star Wars movies, they don't really switch between planets that much. They just go from one planet to the other, but don't go return really to other planets. So it's not as, like, confusing. Yeah, there's like... There's one planet in the beginning... They don't name that one. There's a prison. There's two Imperial facilities. Um, there's an ain't like you. They showed it in the trailer, like the ancient Jedi temple. Mm-hmm. Where that that big giant down statue. Um, and then there's Yavin Four. Um, so there are six planets in this movie. And plus the Death Star has some scenes, uh, and Vader's lava castle from the concept art does finally make an appearance. Who? So cool. Get ready for that. Um, Vader makes a weird joke, um, yeah. which at first I was like, oh, that's a little weird, but then I thought about it and I'm like, he made a joke in episode 5 too, when he killed someone, which is fine. Um, remember when he killed that guy and like, apology accepted, Captain? Mm. Um, yes. That that running gag where they kept killing the admiral every five minutes in episode five. Um, what else was there? Um, I didn't like the robot. A lot of people did the the robot played by Alan Tudyk. I like Alan Tudyk a lot, so I think I'll like it. The robot is like C three PO if he was written like Sheldon Cooper. Oh wait, okay, maybe I won't like it. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, it's kind of funny because a lot of its humor is kind of dark, but then it gets annoying after a while. Um, Mads Mikkelsen and um, Forrest Whitaker both have proportionately smaller roles than you would think from the trailers. Um, and then there is there's one other major thing um, with this movie. Um... Oh, there's there's no main character. This is weird about a Star Wars no, movie. No main character is force sensitive. Hmm. I'm fine with that. Like it's it's refreshing. I'm not. Because it's like them taking like it's Star Wars. It feels like I'm watching a space Vietnam movie. There was a jungle in Asian, so Yes. That was like the like the that was that was like the coolest like the the entire end of this movie is amazing. Like the entire third act. The first act of the movie and the majority of the second act both take way too long to get through. There's a lot of, like, you gotta have to sit through the movie, like that kind of thing, where you're like, okay, let's get, like, 
like the, the entire beginning of the movie they're not actually trying to get the plans yet and it's like can we get along to the part where they're trying to get the plans and then you finally get to yeah the like part. we know why we're like we all know why we're here we don't need yeah like this other stuff. it's like what's it called it, it, it's kind of like saying through batman v superman like i'm sitting through this like three hours to get to the fight between batman and superman like that that's what i'm here for i'm not here to see clark kent go and be a reporter I'm here to see That's Superman what beat part the crap out of Batman. Of um, and then there was uh, there was one other big thing. Um, James Earl Jones is getting too old to voice Vader, I think. Does it um, sound like old man Vader? He sounds he sounds like he can't do the voice anymore. Um, and uh, oh wait, have you ever seen the interview with the guy? That's inside of the Darth Vader suit talking about yeah. why they didn't choose his voice. Um, it's he's like, well, Darth Vader's uh, as you can see, he's black, so I think they wanted a black actor to voice him. <laughs> and then he called James Earl Jones a Negro. Nice. And it's uh, super awkward. Um, and um. They see there's a lot of CG in this movie. Obviously, like a Star Wars movie, and a lot of this doesn't exist in real life. Uh, but um, there are CG characters that, depending on who you ask, look good or not good. Certain ones look better than mm-hmm. others. Um, I'm not gonna say who it is that's in the movie because it's a little spoilery. But uh, there's uh, there are a few cool things like that. There, there, there are a lot of little Easter eggs. Yoda, right? No. Does Yoda appear? That's no. Carrie Fisher. Um, there are a lot of cool Easter eggs in this movie. Um, one that's small, that's not really a spoiler. When uh, when Jin and uh, the the guy she's with are walking through a planet, they walk into someone, and it's the two guys from the cantina in Episode Four. Oh. Uh... And, uh, yeah, so that's that's one of the, the things. It's a, it's, a, it's a cute little Easter egg. Um, they should've, little... He should have shaken his hand and be like, wow, I sure do love my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta hand it to you, buddy. Oh, that would be even better. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about it once Peter... Uh, and or Josie see it, and we can do a beware of spoilers on it, because I don't want to spoil it. I'm probably going to see it. Um, and then write about how you didn't like it, because it's not like the original Expanded Universe. No, I'm going to tell you why it's wrong. No, it's not. It it was it was really good. Like, it, like this is a movie where... If That's you're fine, good to have but I will tell you why it's like, wrong. No, this is a movie where if you don't like it, you are wrong. That's, that's like, it's okay to have your opinion... Um, but your opinion is also... Uh, but your opinion wrong. is... No. Yes. You're entitled no. to your opinion, no matter how wrong it may be. That's how I live my life. No. Yes. Um, you're saying you don't like a movie you haven't seen yet. I didn't say that. I just said I'll tell you what's wrong with it. Um, I didn't say that I wouldn't like it. Can I read real quick um, what the New Yorker, like a little thing of what the New Yorker wrote about this movie. Yes. Okay, this is why people hate the New Yorker. So this yeah, is well. from uh, I forget, don't know what the guy's name is. A uh, Richard Brody. The director of Rogue One, Gareth Edwards, has stepped into a um, mythopoetic stew so half-baked and overcooked a morass of pre-instantly overanalyzed implications of such shuddering impact the series fundamentalist that he lumbers through seemingly stunned or unconstrained or constrained, or cautious to the vanishing point of passivity, and lets neither the characters nor the for- formidable cast of actors, nor even the special effects of which he has previously proved himself to be a master, come anywhere close to life. That was one sentence. Oh my god. Here's another sentence. Whether the downplaying of the formidable, formidable cast charismatic energies is an intentional downplaying of the potential risk to the characters that they play... Whether it's a matter of not actually allowing viewers to get too attached to characters or actors, not allowing viewers to be bummed out by bad news, but rather breathing past it in a spirit of fealty, not to these characters or performers, but to the franchise, is a kind of corporate criminology, like Kremlin, that would rightly take the place of criticism in assessing the substance and tone of the movie. 
There's that none of the Shakespearean. That's factually incorrect, by the way. There's none of the Shakespearean space politics, enticingly florid dialogue, or experiential, exper. Oh, experimental thrills of the best of George Lucas's Star Wars entries. This is like I'm gonna read that again just so you can feel the full impact of what I'm about to read. There's none of Shakespearean space politics, enticingly floor dialogue, or experimental thrills of the best of George Lucas's Star Wars entries, parenthesis, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> wait, 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 okay, time out. If you wanted to say that Revenge of the Sith is the third best Star Wars movie, I'd be like, okay, make your case. But yes, I... the only place that I would feel comfortable someone telling me any prequel goes is between 4 and 6. And you don't think Attack of the Clones? <laughs> you don't but think Attack, Attack of the Clones? Attack of the Clones anywhere but below even the Christmas special and the Clone Wars movie. I think this is our biggest disagreement of Star Wars is how much we dislike Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones... I like a is a boring piece of crap. I like Attack of the Clones better than The Phantom Menace. I like Phantom Menace better. Josie? I'm gonna stay out of it. You have to choose. No. You have an opinion about any other, every other thing with Star Wars. I do have an opinion. But I just only get... find out Josie's never seen like the first the prequel <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> that was the big no, secret I've seen hiding. the prequels. You have to choose between those two movies. Mm, no. You have to choose. No. All this time, she started Attack of the Clones for the best movie. <laughs> That's what it is. Um, no, I think if you put Attack of the Clones anywhere but last, you're you, that's factually nope. incorrect. Nope. So okay, so what's your order? Okay. Five, four, six, three, two, one. Oh, wait, wait I sorry. forgot seven. Oh, so, oh, let me do it again. Uh, five, four, six, seven, three, two, one. I go five, four, seven, six, three, one, two. And Rogue, oh no, I thought Rogue One, Rogue One goes in between 5 and 4. Uh, but I would, like, that's fine, as long, like, as long as you don't put Attack of the Clones any higher than 2, I can live with that. Mm -hmm. But, like, putting Attack of the Clones that high up, where it's, like, the best, like, no, if you want to, even want to say the best of the, the Shakespearean issues, then you can say Empire Strikes Back. Because the original trilogy is literally just Hamlet. Yeah. It's space it Hamlet. Like, I don't understand. Um, but yeah, like I said, I would give it, I would give uh, Rogue One a solid nine. Um, what was that second sentence he said where it's like, you don't care about any of the characters or anything like that? It was like... Um, about how they purposely underplay the energy of the characters so people don't feel bad about them or something like that. It was something like that. No, that's that's wrong. Like, there are even minor character deaths that you're like, oh my god. Like, they do such a good job of building up in this movie. Like, it, it, it is. It, it, it does belong just after Empire. Um, so, my order is, um, what am I supposed to do, best to worst, or? Best, best you knew, yeah, best, best to worst. Wait, I thought okay. we were doing worst to best. Okay, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, let's see. Friend of the Sith. Um, Attack of the Clones. Oh no. Return of the Jedi, Attack of the Clones. Empire Strikes Back. 
A New Hope. No, A New Hope comes before Empire. And then the new one, and then Phantom Menace. Hmm. I hated your, Phantom your Menace. Your favorite is Revenge, Revenge of the, of the Sith. Sith. Well, and your, your second, no, and your, it's hard to pick my favorite. And then your third guess, favorite is Attack of the Clones. Return of the Jedi is my favorite. It's hard to do. I like, like, I don't know. Attack of the Clones? I mean, Revenge, Return of the Jedi used to be my favorite. I did like that one a lot. Well, not, not your favorite movie. Which is the best? No, we no. were doing favorites. I, I I'm allowed to pick my favorite. Don't take this from me. Okay. <laughs> so if I cry show, enough, can I get my way? Let, let the record show that Josie selected Revenge of the Sith as her favorite Star Wars. No, I switched it. Okay. Well, you also Jedi. you put you put Attack of the Clones like at your third one, I think. Yeah, you put Attack of the Clones at three. Mm. I don't know. It's difficult to sit there and pick it. Well, no, I'm only based on quality of movie. For quality of movie, like five is easily the best. Like that—that's a hand. That's like I think most a credited. Hand. What? You said hand. Most people <laughs> who have seen all of them will put five as the best because it's the best like five also like you said before when we were talking about a new hope you, it's the only one you can watch without having seen any other ones you can watch five without having seen any of the other ones too but it makes it less it makes it not as good then it takes away some it's of difficult the because i want them all together it's hard to pick like including episode seven yeah no and i did put <laughs> i did put um Phantom Menace after that one. Phantom Menace is but worse. How is Attack of the Clones not worse then? Because Attack of the Clones has cool like background stuff and there's Count Dooku. Count Dooku there's is too better. Many, yeah. There's too much time where it gets to the point where the A plot is a forced romance between Anakin and Padme. That's fine. No. It's not forced. And we have the amazing. We have the um, is forced. We have the amazing. Why would quote, it be? Why do you think it's uh, the forced? Quote. Because the two it's actors have no chemistry in any scene, and the only reason they have to get together is so that way they can shit out two kids. I don't care. There's cool Geonosis scenes, and Count Dooku. Like Django Fett was absolutely not needed as a character. He was cool. Got his head chopped off. You literally could have got some Boba Fett again and no one would have questioned it. It had arguably the worst retcon in the entire series, which was making all of the stormtroopers into clones. That was cool. No, it wasn't. I thought that was pretty cool. And isn't that, like, a big thing about your favorite TV show of, like, the Clone Wars? Very true. It's not my favorite TV show. So, do you actually <laughs> get to bitch about it, or... I'm pretty sure it is. I'm pretty sure... And That's no, your in the TV show, they go and try. It's the beginning of trying to retcon that, like a colossal mistake. And you get to watch. Uh, I don't Yoda. think it's a mistake. You, it is. It's and a big watch... thing. And if you read any of the books, apparent it's like a big thing. Like cloning is a big thing. It's supposed to be some awful thing that's never supposed to be done, especially after the Clone Wars. And before, it was something that people could like buy private armies and stuff, but. Are these in any and canon books? Or... you get to watch Yoda um, fight. I'm so tired of your show. bullshit, Adam. I'm tired of your bullshit. What? Is and, it? It's a question. And they are they in the topic. canon books or are they in the legends? They're in your butthole. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> and... We had to watch Anakin massacre a family, like children. Yes, it's a prequel massacre to the real children. I don't know. I'd rather. I I I didn't that scene also. Like that wasn't a good scene to have him 
like, snap and kill the entire, like... And the thing is, too, Hayden Christensen doesn't sell after that scene, either. It's the next scene where he's like, I killed them all, even the women and the children. <laughs> like, the way I guess did delivered that line is the way the actor in the $200 million movie also delivers the line. Mm, no. Yes. Yeah, I, I do agree with no, that. No, no, because the actor was a lot, was very sexy, so nobody cares. That's also absolutely people not care. true. Uh, well... And this movie helps um, prove that Jar Jar Binks is actually a Sith Lord. Ow. Because there's a scene. (laughs) Yeah. We can go into this in another episode because I have all the facts, but there's a scene where uh, Jar Jar Binks is sitting alone and he just gets up and he senses that that Anakin and Obi-Wan have arrived. And just like walks over to the door before they open the because door. Because it's a fucking elevator. That's because he's CGI. It's an elevator. That's how he no, knows it's... the game. Have you ever been to a place where the elevator has like ding ding and then the fucking door opens? Like you can and hear he it moving. And he goes there before. Because <laughs> he has the force. It's an elevator. It's not a door. Well, there's um. This is canon, there. by the way. This episodes. is canon. Um, is Matt, you you know in the first episode where the weird little Indian boy says, um, no, "You're no, a no. wizard," or "That's wizard." What? You remember that scene? Where he's like, "That's wizard, Annie." Like it's stu, it's very stupid. But do you remember yeah. that? Sure. Okay, so wizard is when people can touch the force. Um, but are not Jedi. And they can't touch the Force where they are, like, awesome at it, but they can do, like, little tricks and stuff, which is common. So. Okay. There you go. Maybe he can touch the Force. Maybe, but it's still an elevator. It doesn't change the fact that it's an elevator. Okay, also, in a lot of the first movie... There's like weird scenes where whenever Jar Jar like is promote like basically promoting himself further and further amongst everyone, like while he's talking to them, he mouths what they're saying. Mm. And that that, that's weird. because it's a CGI character, like Josie said, so every one of his movements is planned. I this is just a ploy to get me to rewatch the prequels and it's not it's kind of working. I, I sent a link about it. Just let everyone watch. Yeah, he also, once he be uh, him and Palpatine are from the same planet and hang out together all the time. And who is it that uh, calls for the vote to declare Palpatine Emperor? Darth Jar Jar. Darth Jar Jar. The best is who is the one? Who is the one that lets uh, the not? Democracy not die with screams, but with the uh, with cheers. That was Padme. Yeah, but Darth no Jar Jar was the one that led led it. Led you keep saying Darth Jar Jar. Because that's who he is. By the way, let's think about this for a second. For people who were like, "Oh, well, why didn't we just let George Lucas have his way?" Do you know what George Lucas's name for Star Killer was in the Force Awakens, uh, the Force Unleashed? Pussy butt fuck. What he wanted the canon. Sith name to be for what? Starkiller. He wants to be either Darth Insanius or Darth oh. Icky. <laughs> Insanius is okay. Yeah. Darth Icky. They, Icky is not. They asked him, what do you think we should name him? We want to give him an official Sith designation. What do you think we should name him? He said either Darth Insanius or Darth Icky. Are you sure that was the correct pronunciation? It's I C K Y. It could be Ike, which still isn't that great. Yeah, exactly. Or Iki. No, it's it, it's it's not good. I, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, Do you want me to apologize? I don't. Yeah, that'd be nice. Sorry. Groveling would be nice too. Um, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, um, 
Also, you don't really need to watch uh, The Clone Wars, the episode with uh, Forrest Whitaker's character, to understand where he comes from. They do a pretty good job of explaining it in the movie. That's good. Also, uh, the ghost makes a cameo. We talked about that last week, though. The ship from uh, Rebels makes a small cameo. Uh, oh, yeah, wasn't it, like, in the trailer? Yeah. Um, but I'm not going to tell you what the other, the other thing that makes a big cameo from the extended universe. I think I think this one will make Josie very happy that it's recanonized. Also, I think this is a, ba- a good job of... It, it shows that Thrawn is back in the official canon. Oh really? Yeah, because he was Thrawn's... in Rebels. Oh, oh cool. yeah. I remember. He... Have you read any of the Thrawn series? No, because they're not canon anymore. <laughs> I thought you just said they were canon. No, no just no, no, the no. characters. The books aren't canon. The character is. Books. <laughs> and his new adventures, uh, fighting the rebels, are canon. Well, that made you even more mad if they just, like, change everything about the character, even though they, like, Kinda, added it yeah. to, or just deleted because his him. character, because his character is pretty awesome. I'd be really upset if they changed him. He's pretty see, freaking cool. I want to see a nice The Old Republic movie. I don't think that will happen. No, I know. But, like, I don't want to I want keep... to see, I want to see, like, some super prequels. Like some force origin kind of stuff. Like, I, I see would see a general Rebus Jedi Hunter movie. That'd be cool too. Like if they just took some of the episodes of the Clone Wars and just made them into movies, I'd be fine with that. There are a few arcs you can just make into a movie. I'd be fine with that. Just cut Ahsoka out completely. Um, so yeah, so, um... Why don't you like Ahsoka? I don't know, she's annoying. And did you know you're it, annoying. Is now, it is now canon that the last person that Vader thinks about before deciding to kill the Emperor is Ahsoka? That doesn't make sense. Why? Why? Because in the novelization of Return of the Jedi... For the most recent novelization, which is the most recent canon version of Return of the Jedi, he sees the Emperor attacking Luke with the lightning. And then he thinks back and his screams, Father, please. He thinks back to Padme. And then he thinks back to the apprentice he betrayed, Ahsoka. And that's when he decides to kill him, kill the Emperor. That's really stupid. Yep. And I hate it. Yep. That... That's and you know what? That's not Disney. That's George Lucas. Because God, Disney did George. not create Ahsoka. George Lucas did. So that's how we'll end this episode. Um, we uh, we will be back next week with Home Alone. Oh no, Nightmare Before Christmas is next week. Uh, then Home Alone the week after. And then we have our year in review. What's the matter? Nothing. You just made a face. None of your business. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. I don't, I'm not a big fan of... Life by oh. saying that George no. has been ruining Star Wars longer than anyone else has? No. Um, anyways. All I was... I'm just not a fan of Home Alone. That's all. Home Alone is a pretty good Sounds movie. Like good. There's like okay. ten minutes of good. Um, also, oh, one other thing. If you ever watch The Clone it's Wars... It's like super fucking weird and creepy. If you ever watch And relies Wars, on incompetent burglars. That, that's not that long of the movie. That's literally that part like of the, the movie is only minutes. like five minutes. Um, there's like a whole movie up until that point. Um... I don't know. Like, I was When I was like a child left alone, I, I don't think you could have made a movie out of it. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know what's wrong with that kid. Um, what's it called? Well, he was um, being the actor who plays Obi Wan. The actor who plays Obi Wan in the Clone Wars TV show obviously only heard the one-liners and the little like zips that Obi Wan makes because he delivers every line like that in the show. Oh yeah, I remember that part of Home Alone. 
Uh, that was uh, okay. That's well, anyway, uh, we will be back with. We also be doing a Rogue One. Be aware of spoilers with complete spoiler review once uh, Peter has seen it. And I assure you, we will be doing another commentary episode. We just have not had time to do that recently. Um, so we'll be back with. I don't all believe of those. you. We will be back with all of those starting next Thursday as usual. Who is blowing into the? 